Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners and in this video we'll create a simple responsive footer layout with CSS Flexbox. To set up this example I've already created a basic header, main content area and footer layout. Let's start filling in our footer's HTML by first creating a div with a class of container. While the footer element itself will be full width, the container element will have a contained width so that the content inside our footer is not stretched all the way across the page. Inside our container div, we'll create two main sections. The first will be a div with a class of footer main, and the second will be a div with a class of footer bottom. Inside footer main, we'll create three more divs, each with a class of footer column. So our first div, we'll copy it and paste it in two more times. So we now have three columns. Inside the first column, we'll add an h3 element with a class of footer heading and type heading one inside it. Next, we'll create a link element with a class of footer link and give it an href value of the hash or pound symbol. Inside it, we'll just type link one. If we copy this link and paste it two more times below and just change these to link two and link three. Next, we'll copy the heading and links and paste this into the two remaining columns. So we now have three columns, each with a heading and three links. That's the content of our footer main section completed. So let's now move on to the footer bottom section. In here, we'll begin by creating a span with a class of copyright. Inside it, we'll enter the copyright symbol, so ampersand, copy, semicolon, and then some dummy text of 2021 company name. Below this, let's create a link element with a class of footer social, and again, an href of the hash or pound symbol. Inside the link, I'm going to paste in a Facebook social icon from the free Font Awesome icon library. If you haven't used Font Awesome before, please check out my other video that explains how to get this set up in your projects. The link is in the description below. Before I do that, I'm just going to copy the link two more times. So we've got three links in total. And in the first one, I'll copy the Facebook icon from Font Awesome. In the second one, an Instagram icon, and in the third one, a YouTube icon. That's all of our HTML now complete. As we can see in the browser, things don't look very good, so now it's time to move on to the CSS. I'm going to begin by targeting our footer element and giving it a background color of 141414, which is just off black. I'll also give it a color of white. I'm also going to give this footer element some padding of 4 rem on the top and bottom and 1 rem on the left and right. Next, I want to sort out our links. So I'll target all of the anchor elements inside our footer element, so footer followed by A for anchor, and start by also giving them a color of white. I also want to remove the default text underline by setting the text decoration to none. Finally, I want to affect the hover state on our links in our footer, so to do this, I'll again target footer A, but this time use the hover pseudo selector and change the color 
to a slightly darker shade of gray. So I'm going to use CCC CCC. Although very subtle, if we hover over the links now, we can see that they change from pure white to an off-white or slightly darker gray color. But I want to make this transition slightly smoother. At the moment, it's a little bit abrupt. To do this, I'll go back to the original footer anchor element selector and give it a transition of color 0.3 seconds. So now when we hover over our links, the transition, the color transition occurs in 0.3 seconds rather than instantly, which just makes things a little more smooth. So having done that, let's now get to work on the layout. We'll begin by targeting our container class and giving it a max width of 1200 pixels. To centralize the container, I'm going to give it a margin of zero on the top and bottom and auto on the left and right. This places the container element in the horizontal center. So far, we've worked on our footer element and our container div. So next up is our footer main div. I like to go through my HTML in order where possible so that my CSS is more neatly organized. Inside our footer main element, we've got three columns. We want these to be aligned side by side, so let's target the footer main element. So class of footer main and turn it into a flex container by giving it a display value of flex. Our columns are now laid out side by side in the default row flex direction. I'll also give the footer main a margin bottom of 4 rem just to separate it from the copyright text and social icons. Next up is our footer column class. I'm going to start by giving each column a flex basis of 200 pixels. Next, I'll give each a flex grow of 1. These two lines ensure that our three columns always start out at the exact same width of 200 pixels, regardless of how much content they contain, and then each grows by the same amount to fill the available space. Without the flex basis value, our three columns would still grow to fill the available space, but if they start out at different widths because of having different widths content inside them, they'll end up at different widths. So we won't have three equal width columns. As I want to have three equal width columns, I give each the same initial starting width of 200 pixels using the flex basis property, so they all expand to the same final size. This can be a little bit complicated to understand, so to learn more about flex basis and flex grow, please check out my other videos which I'll link to in the description below. Finally, I want to center align the text in our columns, so inside our footer column class, I'll just apply text align center. Next up is our footer heading class, so we'll target footer heading. For this, I'm simply going to apply a margin bottom of 1 rem, just to separate the heading from the links below. For our footer link class, the next element in our HTML, I'll change these to display block so that they're stacked on top of one another. Our block links by default will be the full width of the column that they are contained within. To change this, I'll give each of our links a width of max content, which makes them as wide as the content they contain. I'll then give each some padding 
of 5 pixels on the top and bottom and 10 pixels on the left and right. Finally, I'll centralize them with a margin of 0 auto. That's everything in our footer main section laid out, so now let's move on to the footer bottom area. For this layout, I want our copyright notice to remain where it is at the left hand edge, but to push the social icons to the right hand edge of the container. To do this, we need to make our footer bottom element a flex container. So we'll target footer bottom and set its display to flex. And next, we need to target the span with a class of copyright and give it a margin right value of auto. So we'll target copyright, margin right, auto. This gives our copyright notice span element a right margin that's equal to all of the available free space inside its parent container. This margin separates our copyright element from the rest of the elements in the flex container pushing them over to the right hand side. Auto margins are a great way to justify individual elements inside a flex container. Finally, let's target our footer social class, so our social icon links. So footer social and increase the size of the icons by setting their font size to 20 pixels. We'll also separate the social icons from one another by giving each a margin left of 2 rem. The desktop version of our simple footer layout is now complete and all that's left to do is to make it responsive. At the moment, as the screen width gets narrower, our columns begin to squash together and everything becomes too cramped. It looks okay here because we only have very short titles and very short links, but if you imagine that you had longer text here for each link, things would look a little bit messy. To avoid this, we need to make our footer responsive by adjusting its behavior below a certain screen width. We achieve this by using media queries. In this case, I'm only going to use a single query for a screen width below 768 pixels but you can use multiple media queries for different screen sizes if you like. I've already got the media query here in my code template, but you simply need to create a query for screen only and with a max width of 768 pixels. When the screen width falls below 768 pixels, rather than having our columns side by side, I want to stack them on top of one another. To do this, inside the media query, we'll target our footer main class, so this element here, which we targeted earlier and turned into a flex container. So I'll target the class of footer main and simply change its flex direction to column. This single rule now changes the alignment of our three columns so they stack on top of one another at smaller screen sizes. I think that's a good place to end the video. It's a very basic footer layout, but it demonstrates the power of CSS Flexbox and media queries for creating flexible, responsive layouts. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.